acting it every day. This is almost a parody of what you described in your books and in all of your work. Uh, what was your initial reaction and what do you think this story tells us about America? I think what's so extraordinary is I think that the idea that America is rigged in favor of wealthy and powerful people has now become commonplace in many ways. You had Republicans running on it and Democrats running on it in 2016. Uh, and that rigging is a, a generalized rigging. There's a lot of systems in American life that allow all of the wealthy and powerful to benefit just Race offers one kind of uh, benefit. Uh, the way we fund public schools, the way you don't in Britain, uh, where the nicer the house you have, the better the public school you get, that's a form of rigging. Um, and any number of other things that give all wealthy and powerful people a distinct advantage in the college chase uh, over everybody else. What was so striking is these rich people weren't satisfied mm -hmm. with shared rigging, right. right? It's like they weren't satisfied with first class on a commercial jet. Right, having better seats, bigger seats, a nicer dinner. They wanted private bottle service rigging just for them with a guarantee over and above the rigging that everybody else benefits from. And in the indictment, the singer guy, you know, these characters are so important, the singer figures, because they, they, sh because they have figured out what rich people want, they offer this kind of amazing anthropological lens. And, and Singer had figured out what they want. What they want is a guarantee, right? And he said, my people don't want to write a $2 million check and hope their kid gets a second look, right? That's too chancy for them. My people want to be done with this thing, I think was his language. They want a guarantee. And it is such an amazing testimony. This is just, remember, one little world that we happen to get a glimpse into because some little piece of glass broke somewhere, right? But you have to understand that this kind of thing is operating in so many domains of our public life. While we have the president's associates day by day pleading guilty to crimes, we have Facebook, which is not a you know, high school sweetheart nostalgia site anymore, but actually one of the principal discursive platforms of our democracy, now under criminal investigation. Right? Corruption, in many ways, I think is becoming, uh, if it's not already long become, the, the central theme of American life in 2019. Deborah, you've got come at this with a different point of view as the, the founder of Harlem Village Academies. Yeah. You've done incredible work at that school, helping so many kids. You've also seen the process and the competitiveness yeah. of getting kids into college. Yeah. So what did you think when you heard this story? Well, I bring an educator's perspective, obviously, to it. And what I thought about is the emptiness that kids feel during this whole rat race from high school to college admissions. Mm -hmm. And it's really a crisis of the soul, I think. And as a country, we need to really rethink what our definition of achievement is because a country's education system reflects its values and that produces what kind of people do we want to produce you know um, children who are looking to give something to the world or just looking to climb a ladder to be successful right. and then they and then you know you wonder why so many kids are on antidepressants so many more kids in high school and college are unhappy and struggling and don't even understand the idea that College is actually an opportunity to find your calling, to search for truth, to study the liberal arts, to ground your life. Um, it's not about beating out somebody else. Right. And so the emptiness comes from checking a bunch of boxes on your way up through high school, right? That's right. Putting your name into the right clubs, being in the right classes, making sure you take the Building right AP and not, and not enjoying any of it along the way. And, you know, Yes, enjoyment, but also ful the fulfillment right. that comes from building a life of meaning, you know. And I tell my kids in Harlem exactly the same thing that I've told my own three kids, you know. Study because it's fa what's fascinating to you. Find what your calling is. Explore the world, you know. D the grades will come because you'll work hard because you're studying what you love. And so what life is about and what we want our children across this country to understand is that you know life is about finding a way to contribute to the world in whatever way you were meant to mm. it's not about what can i get and how can i so beat everybody else in this zero sum game and the the testing industry and it is a multi-billion dollar industry is very much connected to this because there are a lot of people who 
benefit from kids competing against each other. That's the and important the, part of this too, yeah. Caddy, is that endless pursuit of the SAT score at the expense of Endlessly. so much else. And these parents are obsessed with kind of the branding of academic institutions to the extent that they're going to break the law to get there. But Anand, what I think is particularly galling about this story is that we've seen for some, I think it's Laurie Lachlan's daughter on a video saying, I'm not really that fussed about classes. I'm actually going to go off to Fiji the first week of life. She's, she is taking the opportunity that place she was given is now a place that does not go to somebody else Correct. who does not have those kind of contacts some things are zero and perhaps so. some mm -hmm. things are zero so. right and that's you know, the so, problem with this whole and I, I love the work um, that you do in Harlem and what breaks my heart is some of the same wealthy people who out of the goodness of their hearts probably give mm -hmm. your schools money and give good causes like this money the charity, by the way, they used to do this bribery was itself a charity in service of disadvantaged right. youth. The, some of the same people, while doing that and always making sure that's publicly known, it, was now, it is now revealed we're working behind the scenes to make sure that there were certain seats at universities that the kids you're educating could never compete mm -hmm. for. No matter how hard they worked, no matter how bright right. they were, right. that seat was locked up. And you in particular have this guy who I really think, we're a celebrity chasing culture, um, and so the two actresses are really striking to us. The most important fish ensnared in this whole thing is a guy no one's talking about named Bill McGlashan. Bill McGlashan, partner at TPG, big private equity yeah. firm, but more importantly, one of the leaders of this movement of new capitalism. You have these new, uh, these criticisms of capitalism, but you have people within saying, let's reform capitalism inside. You got the RISE Fund. Bill McGlashan starts with Bono, $2 billion for impact investing, investing that's going to help communities while helping others. And it now turns out Bill McGlashan was working to ensure that the very kind of people he was hoping to inspire by the Rise Fund, would never be able to compete with his son for the college seat he was locking up for him with a bribe. So I actually know Bill McGlashan a bit. I and, thought you might. And he, he's, uh, he has led a, an exceptional life in every other respect. And, and as you say, he's trying to do good with his Rise Fund. He's, uh, it's, it's inexplicable to me how this happened. But I want to turn aside. But what if it's not inexplicable, Steve? That's why I think we have to go deeper. Well, we need the explanation. I guess it's inexplicable at this moment to me. But I wanted to just switch gears slightly with, uh, with Deborah. So on the other side of the coin, there's a lawsuit going on against Harvard, as you know, at the moment by the Asian American students saying they've been discriminated against in favor of diversity and uh, inclusiveness and so on and so forth. So how do you, as an educator of children who are coming from disadvantaged backgrounds, feel about a lawsuit like that? Well, you know, I look at a lot of the, these things through the lens of the kids we serve, and they work incredibly hard. And ultimately, you know, there, there, this issue, as with many, is definitely about race in a way that makes people uncomfortable. You know, um, who gets advantages, who is not going to go to jail um, for something that maybe they should. And so um, our kids, 100% of our kids get admitted into college, and, and that can and should be the norm. But the, the system being rigged economically right it starts so much earlier than getting into college it starts in nursery school and kindergarten I have a, a New York Times story here from 2002 the chairman of Citigroup uh, rigging the system to get his two daughters in a new nursery school now 2002 those daughters would now be the college so we've come full circle <laughs> right and the, edu the way education is financed is fundamentally inequitable every child in New York should receive the same exact uh, dollar Correct. amount uh, regardless of where they live and where their parents can afford to live and I'll tell you what would really fix education overnight is if we outlawed private schools yeah. uh, then if everybody by lottery had to go to any public school then the folks who control everything would make sure that all the public schools, schools work funding that teachers got paid double and triple um, so